G'day guys, I'm Callum, I'm here at AVDC, and today we're putting Stinger's High 10 10 inch touchscreen in this FJ Cruiser. Check it out. Okay, so one of the first things we wanted to do today before installing this unit is just check how these pre-outs perform. And so we've got the Stinger High 10 uh, hooked up here to a bench supply, we've got the screen connected to the brain, and we've got the pre-outs connected to our beautiful audio control DMRTA, and it is a fantastic tool for testing these sort of things. Now, it's also really important to note that before we've done this test, we've gone in and we've made sure that these settings are gonna give us an accurate test. So we have a flat equalizer. Our crossovers are all disabled, and our settings are all even so that we are getting an accurate reflection of what's really going on. So I have got here a, a one kilohertz sine wave test track, and it's a really good way to test the maximum voltage we are getting out of these preouts. Now Stinger rate these as four volts, six channels, um, obviously as an RMS rating. So we're, we're looking for four volts RMS out of this um, at full tilt. We've got our display here on the DMRTA, and I'm gonna turn this up to see just how far that goes. So 40 maximum volume, and we've actually got bang on six volts RMS. Brilliant, they're really strong preouts. Very, very nice. But that doesn't really tell us the whole story. What we also wanna know is whether they're clipping or not. And thankfully we've got the oscilloscope function on here. And we can see here that this is, uh, you know, our six volt RMS signal is just over eight volts peak to peak. And that is a nice clean signal. There isn't any clipping or anything going on there. Um, we haven't got the flattening on the top or bottom or any ringing or distortion. Um, so that, that tells us that this is a clean, unclipped six volts RMS, even at full volume. There is one other thing though, that I do wanna check. So we've now got our DMRTA input connected to our subwoofer preouts on this. And they work differently on different head units. Sometimes your level is actually a cut to the output voltage. Other times your subwoofer level uh, boosts it beyond the level that the front outputs are. And that can result in that clipping earlier than the front outputs. Okay, so again, we've got all of our settings, flat, default, normal, so that we get an accurate measurement. And let's see with the sub volume maxed and our main volume max, do we get the same output? No, it's actually slightly higher. So we've got 6.48 volts RMS on our subwoofer preout when it's maxed. So that is actually slightly higher than the main preouts. Probably not a whole lot, but it's worth noting it is. We've also still got a clean output here. It's not clipped or anything. Um, so that's always good to know that's not gonna clip early um, and it's not gonna clip sooner than the, the main output. So that's good. Um, but I would suggest if we turn this down to 14, so there we go. So at 14 out of 15 on the sub level, we're getting exactly the same voltage, give or take 0.02 of a volt that we were getting out of our main preout. So um, that just gives us some, some data about how this unit works, if it's likely to clip uh, and, and the scenarios that we're gonna be able to set it up in, uh, you know, gain matching it with amplifiers and DSPs. Um, but yes, very strong, very clean outputs on this at six volt RMS. Having ordered this as a Toyota kit from Stinger Australia, they've supplied us with the mounting fascia, the steering wheel control harness, camera retention harness, and ISO harness to suit the Stinger High 10. So we're certainly gonna be using this. Let's give it a quick look. So we've got our Toyota speaker, power, and control harness here and a connector to connect to Auto Leads Control Pro 2 Uni interface, which is gonna adapt our steering wheel control signals. Fantastic. We've also got a manual here for the connections and programming of that. And obviously that can connect in like that. And we have a complete Stinger High 10 to Toyota interface. Marvelous. So, beautiful setup here, Toyota to Stinger High 10 with the ISOs in between. While it is perfectly normal to plug these together and use them, it's not what we tend to do at the shop. Um, 
it's a little bit bulky, probably not an issue in this FJ, but uh, we prefer to solder those connections together so that we've got the least different connection points possible. So we are going to combine these two harnesses together and make one, um, but that's just our way of doing things here. So we've uh, paired this harness back. We've taken out the speaker wires. They're not going to be used in this car. We're using an amplified system. So pull them out of this connector. Um, just to reduce the clutter a little bit, we're going to do that to the vehicle side as well. Join these two together for a bespoke harness. Speaker wires, be gone. Now we've just got our steering wheel controls and our power and control signals ready to connect. Okay, so let's assemble this bracketry. First of all, I'm going to remove the screen bracket from our holder here. And as per my user manual, I'm going to attach this right angle bracket here, which is going to be important for connecting to the DIN brain. So we're using M4 by 6. That one that I just dropped. Excellent, so that's ready for the DIN brain. Okay, so I'm bringing these two together. I'm gonna to set it more or less for the minimum mounting depth at the moment and see how that works. If we need to tweak it, we can. So then four by six, two more of them up here. And you can see these are slotted holes. So if they needed to be adjusted, they can be. So these two are married together and uh, ready to fit to our fascia here, which is also going to make up with our mounting brackets. And it's a little bit asymmetrical here because we've got this black faceplate. We've also got the heat sink section here and that's te technically part of the faceplate. That's cool. All right, let's see. see how we go bolting all this together. Okay, so I've got our connections tucked away for now. So I'm curious to see how this fits in place, especially with the uh, fascia. So that's sitting in place. Let's grab our fascia. Okay, so I'm just sitting off this, this off the edge of the bench so that uh, that volume knob's not sitting up. And we're not gonna be using the angled mount or anything like that at the moment. It looks like uh, we're gonna roughly wanna sit centrally, so somewhere around there with the bracket. M4 by 12 screws. And of course, these are slotted holes, so the screen height can be adjusted. I'm just taking a best guess for now. Okay, so that's screwed in, and we're not going to worry about locking off our angle just yet. I'm going to go and try that out on the car, see what the height is like. Okay, so that mounts on pretty easily. We're going to need to tilt this back a little bit. And I also think that it can move in a little bit too, which is going to help that fascia fit a little bit better. So uh, I'm going to pull this back out and uh, we'll take another look. But that's usually the way things go with these floating screens. So uh, we'll get it tweaked up nicely. Okay, so we've adjusted this unit a little bit. We've got the tilt on it. We've also sunk this a little bit further into the dash. So let's see how that looks. Now that's an easy fitment. Uh, we all agree this, this looks much better. It's fitting and sitting really nicely. There's sort of about a finger's width clearance to the dash and you can still reach into these air conditioning controls quite easily, which is worth considering. Plus there's still good clearance to the air vents. Uh, you can see the clock and all of that too. So um, we reckon this is sitting in a pretty good location. So I think it's time to uh, test it out electronically and we can start uh, finishing up this install.
Okay, so Jamie has done a brilliant wiring job here. Um, we've got our harness for our pre-outs here and our camera. We've got antenna. We've got the harness for the unit, microphone, and for our steering wheel control adapter. And uh, if I just pull these out a little bit and mess it up, goodness me, you'll see we've got our factory matching connectors here um, plugged straight into the factory harness for steering wheel control and power. Obviously no speakers connected there because they're not required. So um, very nice job, Jamie. Next thing, we'll get the uh, steering wheel control adapter in and then we'll plug this thing in for a test. Okay, so before we pop this in the car, I'm gonna put these screen cables in ready to go. There we go. So they are now ready to connect to the screen. That'll be great. Okay, so one of the last steps is getting our Control Pro ready. This is our steering wheel control adapter. So, so the uh, wiring harness that comes with it, not required, although we will want this output here. We're not gonna be using this wire, so we're going to take that up. Um, but we will be using the jack to connect to the patch lead into the stinger. So we'll take this one up. And then we're left with the plug ready to connect to the stinger's patch lead. Now we ought to program this to suit. Our guide here has our dip switch configuration as required for our Toyota FJ Cruiser. We're going to copy that. Oops. And we also need to program for a Clarion head unit. That's going to accept the signals. Uh, the high 10 is going to accept these Clarion signals here. So we'll switch that one and that should be set. So as is always good practice, we're going to cover those switches now to show that we've set them. We won't need to interfere with them again. So they are all set and we know they've been set now. So we just need to plug this in, this end. The other end is gonna plug into our harness and we are now ready to pop that into the car for steering wheel control. Brilliant.